forts and palaces, mosques and temples are the symbols of our rich heritage. According to Jawaharlal Nehru, they unfold the long panorama of India's history with its ups and downs, its triumphs and defeats. They are the foundations on which we are building our today. The Red Fort in Delhi, once a citadel of the Mughal power, is also a symbol of India's defiance of the British Raj. India's first war of independence started on the 10th of May, 1857. Indian sepoys revolted in Meerut and marched to the Red Fort to rally round Bahadur Shah Zafar, the last of the Mughal rulers. Bahadur Shah was proclaimed the Emperor of Hindustan. For four long months, the Indian soldiers displayed exemplary valour and defended the city. The enemy had to fight for every street, every house, every inch of territory. The British recaptured Delhi. Bahadur Shah Zafar was exiled. Even after the fall of Delhi, Rani Lakshmibai of Jhasi continued India's fight for freedom here. The valiant Rani was killed in action. Her deeds are best recalled in the poem of Subhadra Kumari Chauhan. खूब लड़ी मर्दानी वो तो झांसी वाली रानी थी बुंदे ने हर बोलों के मुंह हमने सुनी कहानी थी खूब लड़ी खूब लड़ी मर्दानी वो तो झांसी वाली रानी थी The Indian National Congress was born at the Gokulda a significant station of Bengal long struggle for independence A number of revolutionaries and patriots were arrested during the anti-partition agitation they were imprisoned in Alipur jail, Calcutta. Today, it is a place of pilgrimage sanctified by the deeds of courage and sacrifice of patriots like Khudiram Bose, Barindra Ghosh, Sri Aurobindo, Subhash Chandra Bose and others. In 1917, Gandhiji shifted from Kocharab to an ashram on the banks of the river Sabarmati near Ahmedabad. Gandhiji established a center for rural development and vocational training. The Mahatma's hut, Hriday Kunj, soon became the nerve center, the political headquarters of India. Many momentous decisions were taken here. A resolution demanding Purna Swaraj, complete independence, was passed by the Lahore Congress. On February the 14th, 1930, the Congress Working Committee asked Gandhiji to take follow-up action. On the 12th of March, 1930, Gandhiji started from Sabarmati on his historic salt march to Dandi on the sea. He said, My aim is to get the salt tax abolished, our first step towards freedom. At Darhasana, the march was led by Sarojini Naidu. During the salt satyagraha of 1930, Raja Gopalachari started on a march from Tiruchanapalli to the beaches of Vedaranyam.
the manufacture of salt at Vedaranyam is commemorated by this memorial. The flame of liberty at Jallianwala Bagh reminds us of man's brutality against man and of the suffering and sacrifice of the people of Punjab. The 13th of April 1919, the Baisakhi day. Over 20,000 people had gathered here to celebrate Baisakhi. General Dyer entered Jallianwala Bagh with 90 fully armed soldiers and without warning opened fire on the peaceful assembly. 379 people were killed and 1,200 wounded. Every year, the nation pays homage to the martyrs of Jallianwala Bagh. Gandhiji decided to counter violence with non-violence. The Nagpur Congress of 1920 passed a resolution to launch a non-violent, non-cooperation movement. The revolutionaries played an important part in arousing patriotic fervor. On the 23rd of December 1912, when the procession of Viceroy Hardinge was passing through Chandni Chowk, Delhi, a bomb was thrown. The Viceroy was injured. In a quiet corner of Bombay's Laburnum Road stands Mani Bhavan, now dedicated to the memory of the Mahatma. When Gandhiji returned from South Africa in 1915, Ravi Shankar Javeri invited him to stay here. It remained Gandhiji's Bombay headquarters till 1934. In 1917, when Gandhiji was recuperating here from an illness, he learned to spin on the charkha. In 1931, after the failure of the second round table conference, Gandhiji returned to Mani Bhavan. When it was decided to launch a civil disobedience movement, he was arrested on the morning of the 4th of January 1932 and taken to Yeravada prison. Today, Mani Bhavan is recognized as a research institute on Gandhian thought and rural development. The vast quantity of Gandhiji's published and unpublished letters, articles, documents, books and photographs keep alive Gandhian thought and philosophy. Thought of spirit is gone. For I can see that in the midst of death, life persists. Allahabad is situated at the confluence of the Ganga, the Jamuna and the mythical Saraswati. This palatial building, the Swaraj Bhavan, was the old Anand Bhavan, the home of Motilal Nehru. The entire Nehru family was drawn into the freedom movement. On the 6th of April 1930, Motilal Nehru gifted the building to the nation. Accepting this gift, the Congress President Jawaharlal said, Our lives have become part of the larger life of the nation, and we go up and down with it. If that is so, why not share the house also? It was renamed Swaraj Bhavan and became the official headquarters of the Congress. Motilal and son Jawaharlal were imprisoned several times in the Naini Central Jail near Allahabad. Jawaharlal Nehru expressed his loneliness to his 13-year-old daughter Indira. You sit in Anand Bhavan and Mummy sits in Malacca Jail and I here in Naini Prison. And we miss each other sometimes rather badly, do we not? In 1922, Mahatma Gandhi was tried at the circuit house Ahmedabad 
on the charge of writing three seditious articles. He was sentenced to six years' imprisonment and sent to the Yeravada Central Prison, Pune. Gandhiji chalked out his daily routine. He spent a lot of time in spinning and carding. He devoted six hours a day to literary pursuits, studying Hindu scriptures, books on Islam, Christianity, Buddhism and social and natural sciences. In January 1924, he was operated upon for appendicitis and released on medical grounds. In May 1930, Gandhiji led the Salt Satyagraha. He was arrested and again sent to the Yeravada prison. After the publication of the Simon Commission's report, the Viceroy wanted to hold peace talks with Gandhiji. Tej Bahadur Sapru and M.R. Jayakar visited the Mahatma at Yeravada to explore the possibility of such talks. The Congress President Jawaharlal Nehru and Motilal Nehru, Vallabhbhai Patel, Sarojini Naidu and Syed Mahmud were brought to Yeravada for consultations. Since no assurance had been given that India's demands for dominion status would be considered, the Congress decided not to attend the conference. The British realized that no progress in constitutional matters would be possible without the cooperation of the Congress and released the leaders. Mahatma Gandhi attended the second roundtable conference in London. The conference failed. On his return to India, Gandhiji was re-arrested and sent back to Yeravada prison. On the 17th of August 1932, the British Prime Minister announced the communal award, dividing the people of India into 11 different categories. Gandhiji and the Congress protested against the award. Mahatma Gandhi wrote that a separate electorate for the depressed classes would be harmful to them and for the Hindus. When the British attitude did not change, Gandhiji decided to fast unto death from the 20th of September. Hectic consultations were held between leaders of depressed classes and Hindus to reach a consensus and save the Mahatma's life. Leaders of both the communities came to Yeravada for talks with Gandhiji. An agreement on a joint electorate was reached with Dr. Ambedkar. Gandhiji broke his fast. In 1933, Jamnanal Bajaj invited Gandhiji to Vardha to make his headquarters at the geographical center of India. In 1936, Gandhiji decided to live in a village so that his mission would become more relevant to rural India. Jamnanal Bajaj placed his Malguzari village of Segao at the Mahatma's disposal. Gandhiji renamed the village Sevagram and said, The greatest of my activities is the Charkha. I hold it to be the best part of my servants, social, political and spiritual. Sevagram became the unofficial capital of India. All our great leaders and the members of the working committee assembled here to plan their strategy and tactics and to discuss their aims and objectives with Gandhiji. Many of the important decisions concerning the fate of India were taken here. Today, Sevagram and Vardha are silent memorials to the memory of the Mahatma and to the great freedom movement. This column at Bombay's Gwalia tank, now renamed August Kranti Maidan, commemorates the 1942 session of the Congress. It was here that the famous Quit India Resolution was passed on the 8th of August 1942. It was also a scene of brutal repression. On the 9th of August 1942, Gandhiji was arrested in Bombay and taken to the Aga Khan Palace, Pune, for detention away from the scene of action. On the sixth day of his detention here, Mahadev Desai, 
Mahatma's devoted friend and secretary passed away. When reports of repression reached the Mahatma, he accused the government for the use of excessive violence. The government in turn alleged that Gandhiji was turning the Congress into a revolutionary party. As his faith in non-violence had been challenged, in protest, Gandhi went on a 21-day fast. He said, I have no regrets for what I have done or said in the cause of the struggle for India's freedom. While in detention, Kasturba Gandhi fell ill and died, thus ending the 62-year-old companionship of Gandhiji and Kasturba. Gandhiji suffered from a bout of malaria. By May 1944, he had spent a total of 2,338 days in jail, 2,089 days in Indian jails and 249 in South African prisons. On the 6th of May, he was unconditionally released on medical grounds. After the Quit India Resolution, the members of the Managing Committee were arrested in Bombay on the 9th of August 1942 and taken to the fort of Chandbibi at Ahmednagar. While in jail here, Jawaharlal Nehru wrote his famous book, Discovery of India. Of his experiences here, Nehru writes, Prison is not a pleasant place to live in for a short period, much less for long years. But it was a privilege for me to live in close contact with men of outstanding ability and culture and a wide human outlook. Many are the prisons which have become places of pilgrimage. Cellular jail in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Vellore in Tamil Nadu, Bellary in Karnataka, Hazaribagh, from where Jay Prakash Narayan escaped in 1942, Lucknow in Uttar Pradesh, and Sabarmati in Gujarat. In Moirang, Manipur, stands a unique memorial commemorating the victory of the Azad Hind Fauj. The flag of free India was unfurled here. Birla House, New Delhi. Gandhiji spent weeks and months in Delhi during negotiations for independence. In the wake of partition, the city of Delhi was rocked by communal violence. Gandhiji stayed at the Birla house. He was looking for peace in the midst of turmoil, light in the midst of darkness, and hope in the midst of despair. When his appeals fell on deaf ears, on the 13th of January, 1948, Gandhiji started his fast unto death. After five days of intense activity, leaders of all the communities pledged to maintain communal harmony. Gandhiji gave up the fast on the 18th of January. The 30th of January, 1948. At five minutes past five, the Mahatma was proceeding for evening prayer. The saint who had devoted his entire life to peace and non-violence became a victim of violence. Jawaharlal Nehru said, And there is darkness everywhere. Our beloved leader, Bapu as we called him, the father of the nation, is no more. Birla House, sanctified by the blood of the father of the Indian nation, is a mute reminder of the courage, sacrifice and patriotism of hundreds of thousands of our freedom fighters. When freedom came on the 15th of August 1947, Jawaharlal Nehru unfurled the tricolor on the ramparts of the Red Fort. A dream fulfilled, a promise kept.